Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Understanding Healthcare presented by Can TV Chicago. This is a special show where we're going to be talking about the Affordable Care Act and how it affects you as a Chicagoan. We're going to go over a series of topics over the next 25 minutes, but please be sure to call in. This is a live show. The number is on the screen right in front of you, 312-738-1060. Today we are joined by Brian Burrell. Brian, thank you for being here. Thank you, Steve. Okay, I'm going to put your information up for everybody. Now, Brian works with Young Invincibles. Uh, he is a Midwest Regional Manager. Now, Brian, tell us a little bit about what you do. Definitely. And so Young Invincibles is actually, we're a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization uh, founded around the Affordable Care Act. So we were started as a student group back when the debates were going on. We just wanted to make sure young adults were represented throughout those debates. And since then, we've grown to work on advancing economic opportunity for 18 to 34-year-olds. But health care has always held a very special place in Young Invincibles' heart there. And so we've been working to educate young adults, make sure they understand what's going on with the law, and make sure that they actually have all the information they need to enroll in health care if that's what they're interested in. This is all good. This is all helpful. Um, so today we're going to focus a little bit of the show here on um, low-income young adults um, with a little bit of the expertise. Now, I'm going to put the, your info up one more time. Mm -hmm. Young Invincibles, you guys are new to the Midwest, so Correct. this is all brand new. Um, can you talk about a little bit about what you're bringing to the area? Sure. And so we were based out of D.C. For, for the years that we started out, but about six months ago we started a Chicago and Midwest office here. And we've been working to, to bring some of our work a little bit closer to people, going out into the communities, educating young adults about some of the different ways they may be signing up through tax credits, Medicaid, which is going to help the vast majority of uninsured young adults actually sign up for health care. And just making sure they understand to go check out the website, get coveredillinois.gov, and that before March 31st that they're signing up and, and getting all the information that they need. That's great. And we'll, we'll show you the website in a little bit. So we're going to go through everything about how you sign up for this. Um, now let's just talk a little bit in generality. Why is it important for people to have health care? Sure, and so for young adults especially, as the, they're the, the largest uninsured demographic out there, uh, you never know when you're going to get hurt, when you're going to get sick, when something's going to come up. At some point, it, it very likely will. And especially, that's why we actually were named Young Invincibles, is that the vast majority of people think that young adults don't want health care, that they're not getting it because they think they're young and invincible, but that's not true. Actually, over 70% of young adults said that the number one reason why they don't have health care is cost. And that's part of what the law does, is that it helps to make sure that there are different affordable options, either Medicaid or tax credits, that are available to make it a little bit easier to afford. Since going to pay for health care on your own with no insurance, it can really rack up uh, a lot of those medical bills there. So you're saying if I were 21 years old right now that I would not be invincible to... Any Absolutely kind of not. Yeah, um, I mean, just from my own personal experiences, just a few years ago, I was I was playing softball with our, our work league, and line drive came and, and broke my pinky, and I was in the getting surgery for it to make sure that I could actually stay straight. And that definitely, if I didn't have health insurance, would have been a few thousand dollars in medical bills. That uh, definitely glad I didn't have to pay on on full price for that. Yes, you got to watch out for those softball <laughs> line drives. Um, okay, real quick, we're going to take a second and go to the calls. Uh, hello, caller. What's your question for our show? Uh, yes, thank you for taking my call. I wanted to make the point that uh, I certainly do agree that young people uh, need to be given alternatives that don't simply uh, equate to, uh, to, for instance, putting money in their pocket and asking them to decide whether it's going to be health care or something else. Because in, that, in those cases, I do think that all too often young people who, as you point out, think of themselves as invincible, uh, and you say to them, you know, here's an extra $5,000 or you can have health care, they're going to go shopping by and large. And I think the way to institute good public policy in this realm is to give them, again, tax credits, give them vouchers, give them uh, no other option other than to use this towards health care. It's interesting you point that out, actually, because we do, uh, we, one thing we were going to focus on, I might as well talk about it right now, where you were going to talk about tax credits. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about the strategy behind that? Sure. And so the tax credits are actually, uh, I think it more or less describes exactly what the, the caller was, was looking for in that mm -hmm. you receive money to basically take off of your monthly premiums. And so when you're signing up for health care, when you're actually going in, looking at the website, shopping for your plan, you type in your income and you're within the, the limits that are set by the law. It varies on your income. There's sort of a sliding scale for it. Uh, it'll take off that money directly from your premiums. And so that's really going to help, again, a lot of young adults to really see not only the price up front so you don't have to wait until 
until the end of the year for a tax credit, which is always nice since if you're using this to pay for health care, it's something that you're going to need every month to make sure that you can afford it and that to make sure that you're not waiting until the end of the year for that refund, but you can apply it directly to the premiums. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to, to pay attention to here because there, and there's even a specific thing about Illinois. Now, we were talking before the show about mm -hmm. the differences between you know, Indiana and Illinois. So there's there's even things that are very specific to Illinoisans, mm -hmm. especially the young the young individuals that they should pay attention to. Yeah, and so one, one of the things specifically about Illinois is that they were one of the states that chose to expand Medicaid to uh, the, the low-income young adults pretty much, or to the entire population more or less. If you're making below about 138% of the federal poverty level, which is around $16,000 for just a single uh, independent person, then you can go and qualify for Medicaid, and that was expanded here in Illinois and some of the other states in the region uh, didn't. So you have to make sure, depending on where you work, depending on where you live, if you're traveling from other states, that you check out what you might qualify for in Illinois compared to some of the other states in the area. Okay. And um, in general, I wanted to point out that um, for those who don't know what Medicaid is, mm -hmm. uh, now, the, the, you got the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then you also got Medicare, which is for people of 65 and older. Correct. And Medicare specifically, can you just real quickly to summarize it for everybody? Uh, for, for Medicaid? For, for, uh, for Medicare. Sure. For Medicaid. Sure. And so, uh, yeah, so Medicaid is it's a free program to help pretty much pay for your, your doctor's visits, your hospital visits. It covers all of those without any sort of cost to the individual and specifically helps, again, if you're making below 138% of the federal poverty level. And especially also, uh, I want to make sure to point out that also if you're currently unemployed, you can also qualify for Medicare for Medicaid, and that can help pay for your doctor's bills. You can find doctors in the area, uh, and a lot of that will be free to individuals. So it's something that you want to make sure. You can still buy private health insurance if you prefer, but it's an option for people if they want it. And uh, do you know roughly how much a year 138% of the poverty level comes out to be? Sure. So it depends on the number of people in your family. But if you're a single person, it could be about $16,000. And actually, if you're making minimum wage, say, here in Illinois, then if you're even working about 30, 40 hours a week every week, you could still actually qualify for Medicaid. It depends on your individual situation, how many people in your family, if you're married, have kids, living with your parents. And so that can change how much your family income is. But specifically for a lot of people that are working minimum wage jobs, maybe working part-time, it's an option they might want to explore if they currently are uninsured. So now if you want to figure out if you would apply for the uh, Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. if you would apply for Medicaid or even Medicare, I want to go ahead and put up the basic info here for everybody. The website, Get Covered Illinois, we'll show that in a few minutes. That's where you can go to sign up for everything. You can also call this phone number and kind of explain your situation, mm -hmm. uh, meet with a navigator in person, and then also they can assist you in deciding whether or not you would apply for Medicare, Medicaid, or the Affordable Care Act. Yeah, and one of the great things about the website as well is that actually if you go to GetCoveredIllinois.gov, you can enter in your income and it'll determine whether or not you might qualify for Medicaid or whether you'd actually buy a private health insurance plan. And so you can just find out directly from there if you might want to go apply for Medicaid instead online, as well as obviously going to get in-person help or, or calling the hotline. They can do the same determination as well. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a few options for people out there. So now um, let's talk a little bit about what the Affordable Care Act is now. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing I want to point out, and you might have just seen me put this up, is that the two, two main things to begin this conversation are that you must live within the United States of America, mm -hmm. uh, and you must be a U.S. citizen or a national. Um, so that's two steps going toward signing up for the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. Now, w what's the purpose of the Affordable Care Act? What, why is it so important right now? Sure. And so kind of the, the two big points that I like to say about the Affordable Care Act is that it worked to make more affordable and more accessible. And so part of it was making sure that some of your your yearly checkups, some of your immunizations, those are all covered through the Affordable Care Act, as well as uh, contraception, STI testing. There's a few other benefits to make sure that you're going out and that you're doing preventive uh, health care for yourself and you're actually checking into some of those as well as the fact that it's now accessible by making the, the online marketplace, the GetCoveredIllinois.gov website. It'll make it a little bit easier to shop for healthcare plans as well, a little bit easier to compare. You can actually see exactly what the, the cost for some of the different services will be under each individual healthcare plan. And so I think those are two of the biggest biggest things that are really going to help a lot of people, a lot of young adults, buy health insurance now. That's great. No, thank you, Brian, for summarizing it. You say it a lot better than I could, <laughs> so no, much appreciated. Uh, we're going to go back to the phones real quick great. here. Hello, caller. What's your question? Uh, I actually have a couple questions. You mentioned if you made under 16000 as an individual to apply for Medicare. Is that in Cook County, is that county care and Medicare one and the same thing? 
so that's actually that's for Medicaid specifically. I just want to just want to make yeah, that not Medicare, Medicaid. Yes, um, but as far as as county care goes, that's actually a different form of Medicaid. So uh, that program would qualify as well if you want to apply for that. There's also going to be the federal Medicaid, which you can apply for if you're living outside of Cook County. If there's different doctors that uh, the federal Medicaid versus Cook uh, versus county care may cover instead. Did you have a second question? Well, yeah, so I'm, you guys had a number to call in to, an 866, but mm -hmm. you moved the paper before I got it down, because I'm confused about what to apply for. I applied for county care last year mm -hmm. while I was in unemployment, and I don't know why I got declined. They said I would have got a letter in the mail, but I never did, mm -hmm. and when I try to call into the appeals thing, I was constantly on infinite hold. So I don't know if I should reapply for county care, for what I should do. I had taken out Blue Cross Blue Shield a long time ago, like a what I'll call catastrophic mm -hmm. policy, and the health care center that I've gone to that's kind of put me in sliding scale told me that I probably got declined because I had insurance. You couldn't have any, any insurance for county care. Mm -hmm. I said, well, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? I don't want to drop and have nothing before I have something. It's a worry. Yeah. And so specifically for, for your situation, uh, I think it might be there's for part of the navigator assistance. And so you can call into the, the number there. But if you want to actually get in-person help, uh, that might be a little bit easier to talk through your situation and have them help if you need to uh, uh, start a new application. If you go to that getcoveredillinois.gov, you can type in your zip code. And a lot of these, these navigators, these in-person counselors, keep regular hours throughout the day. You can also make appointments. And I would probably suggest to, to talk with one of them to find out specifically more about your situation. Yeah, and since you specifically are talking about signing up and understanding how to research this stuff, let me shift a little bit into some of this for you right now. Sorry I didn't put the, the overhead up long enough. I'll put it back for you here. You know, I take the overhead down so that you pay, so that you, you watch the whole show and you come back for later. But, uh, okay, the number is 866-311-1119. I'll put this up again at the end of the show. Now, I also want to show you guys real quick the actual website. Here it is, Get Covered Illinois. So you can see that this is actually a really good website to do research in. You have a series of drop-down menus here. Uh, one of the ones that I like the most is the Get Answers. Mm -hmm. uh, get Answers right below it here is uh, FAQ, or Frequently Asked Questions. Not only is that a whole big list of questions that you might even call into this show and ask, but you see there's literally any number of questions that you can click and immediately get the answers to. But then you also have... Uh, something that's actually very useful here, which is below we have glossary. And this is also good for doing a little bit of research on the terminology used. Um, insurance terminology can be a little confusing, so the whole point of Get Covered Illinois is to try to be a pretty basic place for people to go and research how to do this and uh, in a little bit, we'll show you how to sign up. But do you want to add anything else? Well, it's one of the, the real quick things there is that also on that website, uh, you can actually, again, type in your zip code and find out specific help. Mm -hmm. And so if you actually look in the, the bottom right corner on the screen there, that get help in your area, you can go ahead and, and find, you, there's the phone number on there. You can click there and find some of the different navigators that are going to be in your area. And so that's something where, especially if you have a very specific situation, you want to go talk to somebody in person, I would highly recommend uh, going to talk to some of those navigators. Mm -hmm. And let me go ahead and go back to the phones real quick. Hello, caller. What's your question? Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I'm still hearing from people that are under the age of 30 saying they cannot afford the uh, affordable health care, and they say they'd rather pay the fine or the penalty than take out the insurance whatever. I still, you know, they, they, just, they, need, they still need uh, for people to give information in terms of making the right type of decision instead of just going for the penalty. Okay. Uh, I definitely, I definitely agree that people have to do some more research and make sure that they, first of all, if they, they fully understand the tax credits in Medicaid, they may be available to them. That that's something they may not have known before going into this, and it's something that we're working to do. We know there are a lot of people that have not had that information, and so we're out there every day trying to make sure that it gets in their hands. But cautioning them against the the penalty, one of the biggest problems is, you know, if you get sick, if you get hurt in between March 31st and November 15th, which is the next time you can start signing up. Uh, those medical bills are definitely going to be a lot more expensive than definitely just the penalty, but also in terms of not getting your premiums, not paying your premiums, not making sure you have health insurance. Uh, some of those health care bills can go a few thousand dollars, over ten thousand dollars, depending on what sh what injury or what illness you have. And so, I think it makes more sense to to get health insurance and and find something affordable through that way. 
I, I think the comment kind of plays into what your organization, that you know, the name of your organization is mm -hmm. Young Invincibles. And you know, you're talking about people under 30 who feel like they should just take the penalty instead of signing up. Mm -hmm. Now, basically from what I remember, the penalty comes if you don't sign up by March 31st of this year. Mm -hmm. And the reason that it's that date is because we know that in April you got to file your taxes. Mm -hmm. So basically they're going to take the penalty out of your return. And I think it's $95. So it's $95 or 1% of your taxable income. And so it gets a little bit tricky there, but say uh, you're making $40,000. So that your taxable income would be the $30,000 there. You're paying $300 instead of the $95. It's something we want to okay. make sure people understand. So it's not is that set. Exactly. So it varies on your based on your income. As well as one of the other things is if you honestly cannot find affordable health insurance, if you're making below that tax filing threshold and there's nothing that's available to you in Illinois, there's Medicaid and so that should be available for a lot of those people, then you will not be penalized if you truly cannot find affordable health insurance. And so that's definitely one of the things where uh, we like to educate people on, but I think that there's a lot of options out there for young adults. Well, and let's talk about the benefits of this, because mm -hmm. honestly, signing up for healthcare is going to get you certain coverage here. So let me go to this, basically, this overall chart here, and let's talk a little bit about some of the things that would actually be covered if you are signed up. These are the 10 essential health benefits. Mm -hmm. um, now, one thing that we had talked a little bit about, well, of course, there's emergency services, mm -hmm. um, you know, ambulance services is a whole other section over here. Um, maternity and newborn, of course, preventative. Um, but let me talk a little bit about mental health because I know that you guys focus a little bit about this. Mm -hmm. What is what? What's the benefits of signing up for health insurance with that? And so one of the the big things for health insurance now is that by establishing those essential health benefits, a lot of times in the past you could go to your doctor, you could go to your go to the hospital, and make sure that's covered. But mental health services is something that. Uh, affects a lot of young adults who may not have identified uh, any sort of illness or disorder on those and so that's something where it hasn't always been covered in the past and now it is as well as prescription drugs is something where there's every insurance company has to cover prescription drugs it depends in terms of obviously generics specific prescriptions and that's something you definitely want to look into but it's something that hasn't always been covered in the past by all health insurance companies and now they're required to do that and I think it really helps a lot of young adults and it's something we want to make sure they understand that these are new things that you may not have had covered in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, let me go back to phones here. Hello, caller. What's your question? Uh, it's more of a comment. Um, the caller, uh, the previous caller had mentioned, and you answered regarding that penalty. Mm -hmm. uh, you quoted the penalty that's for the first year, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which they're saying is $95. However, the information out there is that if, you know, with the next year, it's going to be much, much more than that. It's not going to be a little slap on the wrist you know they, they were talking perhaps 900 something in that range so i do think you have to bring that up because you know you know uh, for those of us who aren't that young anymore you know i always had insurance i worked for an insurance company mm -hmm. you know what it's like to pay premiums i even know what it's like to have cobra to have you know big bucks coming mm -hmm. out of my pocket fearful that my home was going to be taken away or what whatever so you you know insurance is important in life whether it's on your health or on your car you know, it's just not something that, you know, you can say nothing is ever going to happen to me mm -hmm. because, believe me, nobody's invincible. We all die. You know, there's death and taxes and inevitabilities. So, again, that small penalty is just for year one. Mm -hmm. And the longer you put it, you know, in that year, you don't know what could happen. And you could ruin your whole future by just saying, well, I'll put it off another year. It well, no, thank you for that. Uh, it was It's a great point that you're making, and it's a great statement, and you're right, absolutely, that we should mention something about 2015. Um, how much does the uh, the penalty increase? Sure, and so actually by, by 2016, it's actually going to get up to a minimum of, of about $700, $695, or 2.5% of your income, whichever one is greater. And so that's a very great point, and that especially at that point, uh, you can honestly say that some of those health care plans with tax credits will be cheaper to get than it will be to pay that penalty. And so obviously it depends on your income, depends on what some of those premiums will look like by 2016. But the penalty does rise pretty st steeply from, from 2014 to 2016. And, and it's definitely something where if, if people want to make that choice to not get health insurance, they have to look at what they're spending to not get health care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I want to thank the caller again. Those were some mm -hmm. great points that he made. Um, also, I want to point out that 2015 is when small businesses have to pay attention to this. Now, not 2014, not this year, but in 2015, uh, there's a section of the, you know, the healthcare uh, education called SHOP mm -hmm. um, that deals with small businesses, and, and we'll get into that in a future show, but that's also something that applies in 2015 to be looking forward to. 
Um, let's go ahead and take another caller here. Hello, caller. What's your question? Hi, I had a question. If you are a student in college and the school provides um, health care, I don't know if that's insurance, mm -hmm. and will that qualify as insurance or will you be charged a penalty? And so specifically for that, uh, you, uh, your health insurance plan at your school should cover the, the minimum that you have to do. There's also, I would like to suggest that you could also look at some of the private health insurance plans uh, just to see it depends on your specific situation. If you want to make sure you have that health care access at school, that's a great option since it's, it's right there on campus. If you're living on campus or, or going to be there every day. But you can also get private health insurance as well if you want to maybe look into some of those tax credits that are out there uh, to make it a little bit more cheaper. Now, we only have a few more minutes of the show, so I want to go back to the website real quick because I want to show you one more thing. Now, we were on the, uh, the lookup information here. Let me go back to the main page. Now, the main page, you're going to have a section uh, right down here that says, See Your Options. Um, this is the basic first step of going to this website and starting up. So, it's going to ask you a series of questions that's going to push you in a certain direction. Uh, for instance, the first is, are you signing up for yourself? yourself and someone else who lives with you, someone else who does not live with you, or your small business or nonprofit. So by clicking on one of these options, you're basically starting to figure out exactly what kind of uh, options you're going to have when you, when you sign up for the Affordable Care Act. Um, so remember, Get Covered Illinois is a very, very good website to go to for the basic education. Um, now you guys are also doing a big sign-up day. Mm -hmm. You're doing the uh, National Youth Enrollment on February 15th. Can you tell me about what the, the, the idea behind this is? Definitely. And so we just want to make sure that there's a big day where, you know, every day we're out there, we're working to make sure young adults are educated, that they're enrolling. A lot of other groups are as well. Just want to make sure that there's one big day where we can kind of do a big push around it. And so February 15th, uh, we're partnering with some other groups. Get Covered America is one of the other big ones to, across the nation, put together just a bunch of events to educate young adults, make sure they're enrolling. And so we're going to have a couple here in Chicago as well. Uh, we're currently still finalizing the details, but definitely send us an email, give us a phone call. You can actually go to nationalyouthenrollmentday.org if you're interested in more details. If you're interested in even hosting your own event, we'd be happy to help out with that. And so it's, it's going to be a great event, and we're, we're very much looking forward to it. And I want to remind everybody that the other big day to look forward to Look for is March 31st, 2014. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just do a quick reminder. Why is this date really important? Definitely. And so that's the last day of open enrollment. And so currently, you can go to GetCoveredIllinois.gov. You can shop for health insurance. You can shop for Medicaid. But after March 31st, you will not be able to, to do that again until until the fall. And November 15th, 2014 is the next day that you would be able to start. And so you definitely want to make sure if you're shopping for plans, if you haven't decided what you want quite yet, you want to get that health care plan by March 31st. And if you are currently uninsured, or if you're uninsured after March 31st, that's when the penalty will kick in. So if it's April 1st and you do not have health insurance, then you'll be paying the penalty next year. So make sure you look it up and, and get the information before then. And uh, Brian with Young Invincibles, uh, we, you, you guys found a way to make it really cool to look up your information. So you have an app that yeah. you designed. Yeah, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the app? Yeah, so it's, it's called Healthy Young America. It's available for both iPhones and Android. And so more or less, you want to make sure that there's just another way to get information in the hands of young adults. So if you go to our website, younginvincibles.org, you can check it out, download it. It's got some Yelp reviews of doctors in the area. You can just put in your GPS location, find a doctor in your area, find a CDC clinic. You can look up some of the frequently asked questions, some of the glossary to make sure you're educating yourself about some of those terms. You can actually calculate the, the tax credit you could receive as well, put in your income your zip code, some of your situation about how many people you're living with, and it can tell you some of the information right there on your phone. And, and we think it's a pretty cool, definitely uh, something for we want people to check out. So uh, before we get to your info to finish everything out, I want to remind everybody of the basic sign-up. So the website we showed was getcoveredillinois.gov. Of course, you can call the phone number listed below to talk to uh, the people with Get Co Covered Illinois uh, about talking to a person that can help you, which is basically referred to as a navigator. Uh, that number is 866-311-1119. And, um, and in general, you guys are also there to help mm -hmm. people find the right resources as well. Um, what can people call and ask you about at the office? Sure, and so we're, we're happy to talk through uh, different situations to if you're looking for more information, if you just want to educate yourself, we will have a lot of information available, as well as if you are looking to be put in touch with a, an in-person counselor, you can definitely find them through getcoveredillinois.gov, and we also have our own personal contacts we're happy to put people in touch with. Mm -hmm. And Brian Burrell with uh, Young Invincibles can be reached at 240 
449-0134, or you can email them at brian.burrell at younginvincibles.org. Brian, we want to thank you for being our guest on Understanding Healthcare. We appreciate all the, uh, the good, good information here. Thank you very much. And thanks, everybody, for calling in. Be sure to check out our show next Wednesday at 5 o'clock if you have any more questions. Um, other than that, thank you, for, thank you for being with us, and have a good night.